It never ends. New emulation handheld straight out of China. I mean, a month cannot go by without at least one new one. It's something you can count on, like going to Taco Bell and having bloodier black stools afterwards. It's tough to keep up on these things, in all honesty. Sometimes I find it kind of ridiculous with how often these revisions come out. Now, one company who's been doing a decent job with these handhelds is Ambernic. And I've recently reviewed their RG503, and it was fairly capable, but nothing really groundbreaking. And like usual, I figured a revision of that model would be coming out at some point, and here we are. The Ambernic RG353P. But it's not just a different case, a shell. That's, that's not what it all is today. Some things are slightly different here. Obviously, the shell is more in the design of, like, a Super Nintendo controller. That's one difference. Now, it has some flat-ass butt cheeks on the back that doesn't really help too much with grip. I mean, that's why you'd want them butt cheeks back there, right? Now, besides those pancake cheeks, this handheld is a little thick. So some people might like it, some may not. And it seems to retain the same style buttons and D-pad from the previous model. It's really going to be up to preference on the feel of these buttons. I mean, it's subjective, obviously. Now, for me, they have a slight stiffness to them, but overall, not bad. I have no issues with anything registering the presses here. No problem with Dragon Punches and Hadoukis and Street Fighter or anything like that. But I do feel the size of the D-pad and buttons is a bit too small and not as comfortable as it could be. One thing I have to point out, though, is I do really like the feel and placement of the shoulder buttons. They got that one down. Some handhelds get them horribly wrong, but for me, these are probably the best they could do with this handheld shape and size. They feel good, nice spacing and you know, decent shape and size to them. Not clicky, not mushy, just the perfect feel in my opinion, right in the middle type of thing. And also, like many of these handhelds with analog sticks, we got the Switch Joy-Con style sticks here. So up to you if you love them or leave them type of thing. I mean, they function fine. But I also tend to not use them much due to how it feels holding the system and shifting my thumbs to the bottom butt-ass edge to use them in games. Just doesn't feel right. Just wrong. Everything about it's wrong for me. Now, besides just the look, this revision does have a couple other changes I've noticed. This time, with the RK3566 quad-core Cortex A55 1.8 gigahertz processor, we got 2 gigs of DDR4 RAM. The previous version that I reviewed, it was listed to have one gigabyte of RAM. So that may help with some things here. But another interesting change is the screen. We have a 3.5 inch IPS Oka 640 by 480 multi-touch screen. The previous model had a really nice Samsung screen, but no touch. I'd say this screen isn't quite as nice, but hey, it has touch. And the viewing angles are pretty good, so can't really complain. But the touchscreen, it really isn't useful to me. I mean, we have dual boot here, so you can load up, you know, the emulation front end or go into Android. Uh, Android, you could fully use the touchscreen, but I feel using this as an Android device that way is a bit difficult to fully take advantage of in this shape and size of a handheld. But as we do have HDMI out and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, with a few extra things, you may be able to get more use out of the Android side than I did. Like I really didn't have much of use to play it that way or mess with it, you know, especially right out the box. But talking about HDMI and Bluetooth, uh, you know, this system and the emulation side of things, it does work great syncing up a, you know, a different controller and plugging it into a TV. And this is how I recorded most of my footage here, by plugging into a TV and syncing up a controller. Now I did play it just holding it using the actual controller to kind of get an idea and feel for it. So I could actually talk about that stuff, but it was cool being able to use something else. So nice option to have if you want to use it in handheld or as a console for your emulation needs. Now the setup I received here came with the 64 gigabyte emulation build with over 15,000 games included. I tested out pretty much every system here and it's definitely a capable handheld, but don't expect miracles or everything to work. Now, I do mention this quite often with ROM dump builds and stuff like that. 
I don't think this little 64 gigabyte build really qualifies as being called a ROM dump, but it's also not the cleanest build I've ever seen, but it's mostly fine. So not really too much to talk about with that. So with this chipset, things will load up nice and quick. All your eight and 16 bit stuff will play great and look great, no issues at all. Your MAME, Neo Geo, Super Nintendo, NES, Genesis, Turbo Graphics, all the stuff you should expect to be flawless is flawless. And also PlayStation 1. I mean, you really shouldn't have any issues with that as well. PlayStation 1 will play on a potato. Your mom's vibe, all sorts of different devices. So, yeah, we should just start including PlayStation 1. But, you know, when you say 8 to 16-bit stuff, it's kind of a given. Then 32-bit stuff. There's so many 32-bit systems that just don't work on these kind of devices. So, you got to lump PlayStation 1, like, in by itself after the fact type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So there's that, but when you get into Round Nintendo 64, one. Dreamcast, and PSP, that's when you got mixed performance. This is the usual with these types of devices. I mean, it appears the build that I have here, they put you know a little bit of effort to make sure most of the games that are included are ones known to run without much issue on these troublesome systems. And here, most ran just okay. Some of the Dreamcast games had no issues. N64 though, you know, some of the games had audio problems and slow down on occasion, mostly when first booting into a game, it would start that way and then things kind of balance out, but you just never know. Some may have graphics glitches, audio problems throughout the game or just pop up randomly. And it was the same thing with PSP. Some games would be okay, some will have issues just pop up on you. So it's a mixed bag. I mean, how many times can I say it? With these kind of devices, PSP, Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, mixed bag. It's tough recommendation to say, hey, this is an all-in-one system because it's really not. But if you understand what to expect, you know, any of these recent Ambernic devices may suit your needs. Just really going to be subjective on the look, the feel, the design, that kind of thing. They all essentially do the same thing. I mean, there isn't anything glaringly wrong with the RG353P, but it just sits in a weird spot for me with the pricing that it has and everything else that's available out there, all the different options. I mean, it's so easy for me to say, or anybody to say really, like, hey, this is under $200. Instead of buying this, save up $400 for a Steam Deck, you know, a base Steam Deck. It's way more capable. Yeah, it's easy to say that, but some people, they, they don't care about the Steam Deck. I understand, you know, a lot of people like these smaller handhelds that they just want for retro games. And I do think this is a decent option. I just wish the price was a bit lower. You know, if you want something that plays Game Boy, NES, Super Nintendo, all that kind of stuff in a decent way, this is a solid option. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. With that said, catch you guys next time. Bye!